God. What I'm here to talk about is my life's work. Um, the evolution of now. Now, I didn't link with Wendell prior. I didn't know what he was going to talk about. But I was sitting there and I was listening to him. And I was thinking to myself, you know, the synergy. It was just amazing that, that he's talking about the change that you want to see. You have to try and be. And when we talk about the evolution of now and the process-driven human development, oftentimes we drift into the outcome mode, where we want to be without recognizing that right in the here and now, we have multiple opportunities to evolve. And not just evolve within ourselves, but to help the world around us evolve also. And that is very critical. Growing up in Belmont, I had a lot of positive influences. Some negative influences too, <laughs> but lots of positive. And what struck me growing up as a kid was that that now could come at any moment from anyone. There were many times when you'd be doing something, you know, stealing the neighbor's fruit. <laughs> and a fruit thief will come and tell you, boy, we do not for. You'll get in trouble, don't do that. And you think to yourself, what are you talking about? You do it too. But still, the lesson was there. The utterance was there. The opportunity to evolve was there. I think when we look at development, particularly human development, we really need to focus and concentrate on that interaction, that human interaction in the now. Since 1989, I've been working with what we call at-risk youth. But really and truly, our youth are our youth that are growing up in an at-risk society, an at-risk world. We're all at risk. And our young people are behind us, looking ahead, trying to understand what's happening around them. When we look at getting from point A to point Z, there's that whole journey in between that we often forget, but that we're engaged in, in every living, breathing moment. And myself, having worked in the non-governmental organization and civil society for many years, I can tell you that as a recipient of donor funds and these sort of things, that donors often look at development in that sort of linear way. They want you to achieve the Z. They want you to achieve the Z. And oftentimes they give you a sort of template in which to do it, not recognizing that within the day-to-day -day interaction of doing what you do and getting the results that you intend to get, it's not always following a straight line. What would you say to the world? I was coming to do TED. And I was saying to myself, OK, I have things to say. I have lots to say. I'm self-diagnosed ADHD. <laughs> My mind goes off. And I called a few youth that I've worked with over the years. And I just called them on the phone. I said, listen, I'm going to be talking to the world for 18 minutes. What do you think I should say? And they were like, we have the world? Where are you going? I said, well, no, it will be streamed on the internet. And you know you can access it on the internet indefinitely thereafter. What would you like to hear me say? And one of them was like, well, boy, you could say so much. You do so much. But you know what? I want you to tell the world that the youth we lost. And we need guidance. We need space. We need patience. We need time. And we need love.
I was like, okay, interesting. I phoned another one. I told him the same thing. I said, what would you like to hear me tell the world? And he said, boy, Gregory boy, talk about peace and love. You know you see peace and love, man. You always talking about peace and love. And talk about passion, passion for doing what you want to do and follow your dreams. Because you always told me that passion is very important to sustain us and to nourish us. Talk about that. Let them know about peace, let them know about love. The world need that right now. Look what's going on in the world. Look what's going on in Trinidad. And as corny as these, so, you know, it sounds, peace, love, passion. It's something that I definitely have recognized as a child growing up, as an adult, as a parent, as an outreach worker. That these are key, key elements in everything we do. Being at peace, radiating that love, and functioning with that passion. As I said, I've worked with NGOs capturing the data. Oftentimes, when I'm reading documents and talking about data, my wife wants to know, why y'all can't do something now? You're on this committee, you're on that committee. And I say, well, babe, the data doesn't really suggest that. She said, data? Well, you know what's going on. X, Y, and Z. And the reality of the situation there too is that whereas data is important and we need to capture what we're doing, in the evolution of now, oftentimes I'd be interacting with a staff member, a young person, a community leader. And the interaction in the there and now is so rich and you experience so many what I call aha moments, eureka moments. It's like, how do you capture that? How do you quantify that exchange? And that's not necessarily to say that it's going to change your world, but definitely you can see that steps are being taken in incremental forward motions to improve how we interact how we think, how we talk, and how we do what we do. Oftentimes you have donor agencies that are focused on collecting a certain type of data. It could be numbers, because that's easy, quantitative stuff. We want numbers, we want numbers, we want numbers. And here you are, you may be working in a program and your program is doing exceptionally well, but you may not have the, the quantum that the funder wants you to have in order to get those funds or to maintain that funding stream. And they may not look at the other qualitative stuff that is going on, the impact you're actually having on their lives. And the reason I say this is because if you influence one or two or three and you don't capture the 20 or the 24, that those one, two and three, it's a rippling effect. They go out there and they influence their circle. And within their circles, they influence one or two. And those one or two influence their circles. Each one teach one. That same disconnect between donor and recipient is the same sort of miscommunication we have sometimes, oftentimes, between our parents and our children. And the reason why I put that in there is because we have to recognize in the evolution of now how we think, what we do. We should always be conscious in the fact that we want to add value, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. And when we're doing what we're doing, we need to really open ourselves to listening and to understanding because a parent has great intentions for their children, and children want to live up to those expectations. But oftentimes, there's a disconnect. Same too with donor agencies and recipient agencies. Donor agencies, they want to help. They have finances. They want to use it to do 
good things, to advance good things. But the persons on the ground who are doing the work, sometimes they're asked to fit into this framework, fit into that framework, and lose sight of what they do. I can tell you this because I've experienced it. And then you get caught up in the funding stream, getting the money, so that you can continue to do what you started out doing. But then what you started out doing, you kind of forget that, because now you're after something else. And when I talk about that development, I think the conversation has to shift away from what you do towards how you do what you do. Because it's in the how to do where we really capture the essence of that human interaction. Let me break it down. There are many programs worldwide in the Brazilian favelas, in the slums in Caracas, Venezuela, right here in Trinidad and Tobago, in Calcutta, in Australia, where they're working with at-risk populations. And you know what? You take the end result of that evolution of hard work, of passion, of toiling. And what we see at the end is the, is the final product. And we take that final product and we hold that up as a best practice. And we say we're going to take this best practice and we're going to, this practice practice and we're going to share this with the world. And it could be developing classical orchestras in low-income communities. But is it actually the classical orchestras? Is it the instruments? Is it the ensemble? Is it that whole concept that drives the change, that drives the evolution? Or is it the passion that that instructor brings to the process? Is it that love for music, that love for sharing their passion with others that is really the best practice? Is that what we should package? Is that what we should emulate? I think so. Over the years, I've attended many international forums talking about change, talking about youth outreach, talking about community outreach. And you always hear amongst the civil society, they just don't understand. They just don't understand. And you hear from the donor community, oh, they're doing such great work. You are doing such great work. And what I'm saying is we need to open up the lines of communication and recognize what is. And if it is a program, a project that is doing what we all need to do, which is improve ourselves and try to improve those around us, uplift ourselves and uplift those around us. If that is what it's doing, I say, donors, let's feed that. Let's immerse ourselves in that process. Let us give that process the energy it requires. If it needs some organization and some order, great. Great. Give it that. But don't take away from the spirit of the intent and the passion and the work. Don't take away from that, because that is the essence of the practice. Whoa, I went ahead of myself. <laughs> so we'll skip that. <laughs> this is the journey. The life journey. The real journey. It's about being at point A, striving to go to Z, but really and truly just digging the whole alphabet along the way. The B, the C, the D, we must not forget that. We must embrace that. We must recognize that we do have the power. We do have the power to influence now. As we leave here, we must, when our eyes are open, we must be awake. 
we must be awake and conscious of the fact that every interaction, every utterance, every time we stop to allow someone to cross the road, every time we do something that's going to assist someone, uplift someone, if you can do it, do it. Evolve in that moment. Evolve in that moment. Because that is what feeds us, that is what sustains us, and that is what we need to be focused on. Let that be the process. Let the process be us living in the now, evolving in the now, moving forward. Peace, love, and possibilities. That's from a Tree Canal song, actually. And it's something that's always in my head. Peace, love, and possibilities. Because with peace, inner peace, communal peace, family peace, you get that love. And with that love and that positive reinforcement, trust me, you get to realize possibilities. The possibilities are there. And I think that we all, we all are evolving in the now, evolving in the now. I want to thank you and keep it real. Thank you.